going to do the starter on a Duramax today. This is an 01. I want to say it's the same for uh, 01 to 16. I could be wrong, but it's, it's for many years it's the same. Um, but definitely, you'll want an AC Delco starter here. Here's the part number made in Japan. Uh, I got this one from Rock Auto. Um, there's really only four bolts that hold it on. All right, you're gonna have your two electrical wires here and here, and you have your one big one here, and your big one underneath. And these two are 15s. Uh, I forgot what these are. I want to say an eight, uh, a 10, and maybe a 13 or 12 or 13. Um, but really, these four bolts are what hold your starter on. Definitely go with an AC Delco Auto only. Don't go with a parts store. Uh, only reason I say that is because uh, you can't really see right now until this covers off but I have a an O'Reilly's one on there right now and it's giving me some troubles it only starts good every I don't know four out of five starts and the other time it makes a really bad noise so we're going to hope it's not my flywheel and hope it's just uh, prop you know unproperly made parts store starter um, so I got the OEM one this time and uh, that's what the internet tote was telling me to do so I'll try this first before we go check out the flywheel because uh, obviously that's a lot more money and not to mention a lot more time so first up you got to remove your liner not too bad and undo your starters um, I'm gonna do the undo the positive on each side so really the only tools you're gonna need for this job are two different extensions uh, half inch drive something strong to break them because they are torqued to 58 foot-pounds. Sometimes you can get the top bolt with a, uh, the top one right here. Sometimes you can get that with a 15 on a ratchet. Um, now my truck's two-wheel drive, so there's no axle in the way. So potentially, uh, if you have four-wheel drive, you might need a different configuration than what I have set up here. But when I put on the auto parts starter, the O'Reilly's one, this is basically all I need to reach the couple bolts. So let's get the, the two pieces ready. We got the small wire, it's an eight. Just break that loose, and I'm going to take a guess that it's a 12 for that top one. Break those loose and set those off to the side. There's just a, an 8 I used for the top one, and a uh, flex head ratcheting 13 for uh, this one right here. And just slide off. Oh, don't forget that washer too. So I got both those off and now I can work on the two 15s to break them loose. Um, I got a 15 flex head coming up from the bottom on that top one and I was just able to, you know, pull, give it a real strong yank on it. And uh, that was able to come loose. For the bottom one, I basically just took this guy with a 15 on the end and ran it right up over the bottom and use that uh, half inch uh, flex head ratchet on the other end gave a nice jerk on that and uh, they both broke free so now I'm just gonna wiggle them loose and uh, the starter will be completely loose all right here's your two starter bolts uh, if you're in the rust belt you know up to you if you want to get these replaced get some new ones uh, mine look pretty good uh, but as you can see the starter itself is now plenty loose and hanging out um, however I still can't take it out yet because this pipes in the way so you don't have to completely remove it although removing it is definitely easiest if it's quick for you to remove it do that I'll show you the minimum requirements to uh, to uh, get this out you gotta loosen this v-band so the pipe can wiggle and then there's two more bolts underneath. And then here's the, there's the starter and that pipe that is, as you can see, thanks to the down pipe, that's where you gotta get it out. And thanks to the ears on the starter, the pipe is definitely in the way. Now just removing the V-band is not enough. Um, what I did last time, this exhaust bracket right here has two 15s on it. Do the top one and the bottom one and uh, between the v-band and having both of those completely free where you can wiggle this whole thing um, that gave me enough space to get the starter out once these are loose might need to use some heat 
if this has been on there a while, but like I said, I just had mine off, so mine were easy. Now that that whole thing can wiggle, that is just enough, just enough to get, see how much wiggle that's now got? That if you push it this way, that's just enough space to slide your starter through. And, uh, and after that, it's just the opposite. So let's get that out and compare the two starters. So let's compare the new one, AC Delco OEM. Um, I mean, everything looks fine. Teeth are clean enough. They're not, you know, terribly out of, you know. Now the question is, the only thing I found that this thing was a little loose already. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, maybe that was the problem every fifth start it wasn't making connection but uh i think that's a returnable thing right there so i'll get my money back from o'reilly's i clean this up and get my money back and put this one in uh i will say can you see in there now see how much space there is all right so you've got right now to shine a flashlight or a, a mirror and a flashlight and look left, look at your teeth, see how they look, do they look good? Obviously, if they look bad, you, you probably need to change this flywheel too. Uh, if they look okay, I, you might be just a starter. But clean up any oil, look, look at me, I got a bunch of leaking stuff down there, but... Uh, so I'll clean that up. I will say the starter sits like this in the truck, right? It sits like this in the truck, and to remove it, I had to slide it back after the bolts were loose, flip it over and then I had enough space to wiggle it down. If you try to wiggle it down straight up like this, the top, I uh, uh, forgot whatever, whatever this top part is, it hits uh, part of the engine. And uh, But if you flip it over and you slide it out like this, I had plenty of space and was able to get it out without fully removing the exhaust. So obviously the less you have to remove, the better life is for everybody. So we are going to put this one in. Same thing, I'll have to put it up under. And uh, actually, that's one thing that's different. Look at that. Body length. OEM versus, uh, it's a much shorter starter actually. Interesting. All right, maybe that's part of the problem. But we'll put this one in and this one. I'll put in a box and return back to O'Reilly's. I'll clean it up first, but for right now, I just want it off my hood of my daily. All right, so let's get that one back in. Like I said, I flip it over so the, uh, the solenoid's on the bottom, and then it kind of just sneaks up through here. Kind of just sneaks up through here, and then I flip it back over, and uh, just be, be hit ready with a rag to wipe off any oil or grime you get on your contacts but otherwise I mean uh, so much to it all right moment of truth it's all back together let's see if she'll start and crank everybody's happy Well, that worked out great.